Man, I hate science. Yeah, me too. Science is so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. I know. I'll never be good at science. Have you ever been part of a conversation like this? Lots of people have. Learning and studying scientific concepts requires a special type of thinking that doesn't come easily to everyone. You may be surprised to know that even people who study science for a living often struggle with the complicated formulas and theories. Most people find science class fun when they're little, but in high school and college, scientific study gets way more difficult. The books are hard to read, the words are hard to pronounce, and even the pictures are hard to understand. Science can seem really unfriendly to a student, but there are ways to overcome the challenges and learn to study science effectively. Let's explore a few techniques that will help make science learning easier. One of the toughest challenges in science is understanding the long, strange vocabulary terms. Science textbooks are full of crazy words like plasmodesmata, thigmotropism, and chemiosmotic phosphorylation. It's really hard to learn science effectively when all these weird words are being thrown in your face. How did scientists come up with these words anyway? Why do they have to be so unfriendly? Most of the terms you see in science are combinations of word parts. This is especially true with technical terms. Scientists originally coined the terms by putting together word parts from the Greek and Latin languages. For example, the word thigmotropism comes from a combination of two Greek words, thixis meaning touch and tropos meaning turning or direction. Thigmotropism is the word we use to describe the coiling growth patterns that some plants exhibit in response to touch. Think about vining plants like beans, grapevines, and the common morning glory. These plants can climb fences and trellises by coiling their shoots around any object that they touch. You might think it's strange that a long, weird word like thigmotropism was ever invented, but imagine if you were a plant biologist trying to describe a morning glory. How would you talk about its coiling growth pattern? The morning glory climbs by using its ability to turn the direction of its vine growth in response to a touch stimulus. No, that takes too long. If you were a scientist, you would want to invent your own word to describe this concept. Then you could just say the morning glory climbs by using thigmotropism. That's exactly why scientists invented the word. Most scientific terms refer to Greek or Latin roots, but that doesn't mean you have to know Greek and Latin to understand science terminology. Many word parts are familiar to us in the English and other Romance languages. Take the word photosynthesis, for example. It comes from the Greek roots photo, syn, and thesis. Photo means light, as you probably already knew from other words like photography, photon, and photocopy. The word part syn means with or together. This might seem like a foreign definition to you, but think about familiar words like sympathy, synagogue, synchronize, system, and symbiotic. All these words use a form of the Greek root syn to describe a togetherness of something. So we've got photo and syn. What about the word part thesis? In Greek, this word means setting, putting, or placing. So photosynthesis means light together putting or <laughs> putting together with light. In other words, photosynthesis is the process by which plants put molecules together using the energy they get from sunlight. As you can see, understanding the meaning of science terms is easier when you break them down into smaller components. This might be a good time to remember the three main parts of a word, the root, the prefix, and the suffix. A word root is the primary unit of a word. It's often the longest, most central part of the word that carries the most significant meaning. Both prefixes and suffixes can be added to a word root in order to modify its meaning. Prefixes are word parts that appear before a root, like un, in, dis, re, and a. Suffixes are word parts that come after the root, like ed, ing, les, li, and ism. When prefixes and suffixes show up in science words, they work the same way as they do in regular English. For example, the suffix ism appears in the word thigmotropism. You don't need to know that ism is a suffix that indicates a noun. You already know plenty of similar ism 